So today's presentation uh, is about positive attitude uh, for older adults, seniors. Um, my name is Denise Miller and I'm with the Canadian Mental Health Association of New Brunswick and I am a community program coordinator and cover the areas of Westmoreland and Albert, the rural areas, so of those two counties. So I'm really happy that you're here today to join me. I would ask if you have any comments or anything that you want to say to please um, just add it into the chat. And I, sometimes I can take a peek at uh, a chat while I'm talking, but other times I need to kind of be focused on what I'm doing. So if I don't get to you during the presentation, I'll certainly uh, address anything in chat at the end. So um, let's go. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, so. There we go. So the Canadian Mental Health Association uh, nationally was formed back in 1918, which makes us just over 100 years old. And we're very, very proud um, to still be in existent, uh, existence and not just in existence, but growing and evolving and, and doing everything that we need to do to help Canadians, fellow Canadians, maintain and improve their mental health. Uh, and also to advocate for people living with mental illness. Here in our province, we're the leader and champion for mental health. Uh, CMHA helps people access the community resource that they need uh, to build resilience and to support them in recovery from their mental illness. So uh, what do we look like here in the province? Well, we have 18 locations provincially. Our head office is in Fredericton. Um, appropriately. And then we have two other offices, one in Moncton and one in St. John, and each of those offices cover the greater area. So Fredericton, greater area, Moncton, greater area, St. John, greater area. Then we move down to the community program coordinators. That's a provincial program uh, funded by the government. And we cover, I'm one of them, and we're 11 of us in, in total, and we cover the rest of the province. So no matter where you are in New Brunswick, we've got you covered. You just need to reach out and we're there to support. We also have a provincial peer support program, which is tied in with our FAC teams. Uh, we have an employment program working stronger together in Charlotte County. Uh, right now, the funding is only for Charlotte County. I've been asked several times, when will the program expand? Well, we're working on, on trying to secure some funding to expand that program. And when we do, then uh, certainly it will be, uh, it'll be great. And one thing that we're very excited to talk about is our new bounce back program. This is a free free guided self-help program. It's grounded in cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT for short, uh, to help adults and youth 15 and up learn skills to better manage depression and anxiety. It's offered in two forms uh, for support, with telephone coaching using skill building workbooks. The workbooks are pretty neat. They look something like that. That's one of the workbooks. And uh, they also connect, uh, your coach will connect with your family practitioner. They send them an amazing package full of information about the program that you're going to take and it explains how the coaching and everything works. So it lets your doctor know that you're looking at and doing practicing self-help, um, and which is amazing. So that connection is made. And then there's also in the program some online videos that offer practical tips. Uh, and there is the link right there, bouncebackvideo.ca. Uh, and then you need that access code BB today on. Um, and of course, you can just go to our website, cmhanb.ca, and you'll find all that information there. So participants receive support within five business days of being referred. Uh, telephone coaching is available in many languages and there's no traveling required. So participants receive the support and the comfort of their home at a time that's convenient for them. So everything is done online uh, or by phone and it's really, really, really convenient for you as the uh, participant. So let's get started with positive attitude. So when we're talking about positive attitude, attitude in general, we say, well, what is it? Well, it's the way that you think and you feel about someone or something. It's a feeling or a way of thinking that affects a person's behavior. And this is a dictionary definition. So if somebody were to ask you, 
are you a positive or negative person? What would you respond? And then if somebody else, somebody asked somebody who knows you well, if you were a positive or negative person, what would that person say of you? Right. Statistically, 73% of people have a positive or a negative attitude, rather. Are you one of those three and four? That's a pretty high statistic um, talk, when we're talking about that negative. So if you have a positive attitude, well, you feel positive, you think positive, and you have positive behaviors. But if you have a negative attitude, well, then you have a pessimistic outlook. You're critical of yourself and others. Okay, so that's what happens when we're talking about attitude. So positive attitude is an inclination towards the positive aspects of any situation. A positive attitude means that you approach unpleasantness in a more open and productive way. So for an example, a situation or a circumstance or an event happens, and it happens to everybody, but how you choose to respond to it determines whether or not you have a positive or negative attitude. A person with a negative attitude might perceive it as, oh yeah, there we go. I knew it wouldn't work out. I don't know why I even bothered to try. Every time I try something like that, it never works out. I should know better. I'll never try this again because it never works out. That's a negative attitude. Our person with a positive attitude may say, hmm, that's not how I thought that would turn out, but that's okay. How can I make it work for me? How do I take it from here and move forward? See what I mean? So there's a difference in how you react and you respond. I find with negative attitudes, we react. We don't think, we just react. With respond, it's like you take a breath and you think about it and then you respond. So by responding with a positive attitude allows us to look at other options, um, other possible solutions, that kind of stuff. But when you're stuck with a negative attitude, you're stuck. You're, you're really stuck. You don't seem to, to move on. And positive thinking is not about ignoring reality. Reality is reality. It's the same to both people. It's how we perceive it. It's how we respond to it, choose to respond to it. And that's what's really, really important. Um, can positive attitude be learned? Absolutely it can, I'm living proof. I used to be a very negative person, but I've been working really hard for the past year or a little bit more on trying to respond rather than react um, and, and trying to look for options and other alternatives rather than being stuck in a negative um, mindset. So. Positive thinking. So training one's mind to be aware of your thoughts, your beliefs, and your perceptions. So in other words, are we listening to ourselves? Do we listen to the thoughts that we're having? What kind of beliefs do I have? Or do I have beliefs and values of my elders? Or do I have my own that I've, I've developed over time? And how am I perceiving everything? How do I perceive life? How do I perceive situations, people, events, circumstances? To anticipate happiness, health, and success. If I'm looking forward and I say, you know, I want to be happy and I want to look towards having better health and I want to be successful in whatever it is that I try doing. You know, if I'm in a mindset where I'm looking forward to the future and I'm looking forward to these goals, then that's going to help me develop that positive thinking. To voluntarily allow thoughts, words, and images that are conducive to positive results. So in other words, I want the thoughts that I'm experiencing, the words that I'm saying to myself, and the images, the pictures that I see in my mind, I want all of that to be supportive to me in, in positive thinking, in developing more positive talk. And it starts with our self-talk. So instead of saying, I'll never be good enough, we can say, I'll be good enough. So self-talk is really, really, really huge. So self-talk is that, well, that endless stream of unspoken thoughts that run through your head. And self-talk may contain both positive and negative thinking thoughts. So for an example, while I've been talking to you, 
there's another conversation going on in your mind and you're thinking, okay, what is she saying? Okay, 73% of people are negative. Do I fit in the negative category or do I think it? So while you're listening to me, that conversation is going on. What we need to do is to be able to tune into that conversation sometimes and listen to it. And is it speaking nicely to me or is it speaking harshly to me? My conversation that's happening in my mind should never say anything to me that I wouldn't say to somebody, somebody else that I love. So in other words, I need to be kinder. I need to be more thoughtful. I need to be more respectful of me and more supportive, right? So self-talk is about our thoughts and it may be based in logic or re and reason. Self-talk may also contain misconceptions that you create because of a lack of information or past experiences as well as automatic thoughts. Automatic thoughts are our irrational uh, cognitions, the way individuals experience cognitive distortions. So in other words, those, those negative and irrational thoughts are the way that we're, we're allowing our minds to perceive it. So we, we need to be more aware of what it is that's coming in and happening. So reframing exercises. So for here is for an example, a situation, having to hand in a confusing insurance claim the next day. My negative self statement might have been, there's just no way I can get this done for tomorrow. I mean, that's pretty negative, that's pretty firm. There's no way I can get this done. I can't do this. But I don't, I don't know half these answers. I don't, I don't, I can't do this. There's no way I can do it. Where maybe I could have said, if I work really hard, I may be able to get it all done by tomorrow. I could have gotten into a car accident. My negative self-statement would be, I'm a terrible driver. I'll never drive again. Where the positive side of me might say something like, I need some extra support with my driving ability. Maybe I should enroll in a driver education course. So being asked to dance, but not being a skillful dancer. I might say to myself, oh, I can't dance. I'll make a fool of myself. Uh -uh, I no way I'm getting on that dance floor. But the other part of me might say, the positive sign, hey, it's all for fun. Nobody's going to be looking at me anyway. They're all having fun looking at each other, you know, or at their partner. So when we look at reframing our thoughts is we need to pay attention to the thought that comes in our mind. So a situation or a circumstance or an event happens. So what are those first thoughts that are happening in your mind? We need to figure that out. And if they're negative, we need to push them aside and say, nope, nope, not going to look at it in a negative way. I want to look at it in a more positive way. So that's when I reframe my thoughts my thinking. So instead of just saying, you know, I can't dance, I'm gonna make a fool of myself. I'm saying, you know what, it doesn't matter. This is all for fun. It's a fun night. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna have some fun. Nobody's gonna be looking at me anyway. And even if they do, well, maybe I'll make somebody laugh. Right? So we want to make sure that we change our thoughts so that they're reflecting more the positive side of us than the negative. And that's really, really important and helpful. And here's a little bit more of a graph that helps you understand that. So on the left, the situation is anything that happens in an individual's environment. So situations are outside of your direct control, but they can be influenced by your behavior. Okay, so the situation happens or the circumstance or the event. So what are my thoughts? What are the thoughts that are coming in to my, my brain? So what an individual thinks or believes about a situation and how the individual interprets the event. Do I see it as something good for me or do I see it as something bad for me? Okay, do I see that as being something good that happened or bad? Well, those thoughts and beliefs are going to affect my emotions so our mood or how we feel about a situation, emotions are not necessarily based in logic, but they're influenced by our thoughts and our beliefs about the situation. So if I perceive it as being negative in my thinking, then my emotions are gonna be affected in a negative way. So 
if I think that, oh, there's no way I'm getting up to dance on that dance floor and everybody's going to laugh at me because I'm not a good dancer and everything else, my emotions, I might feel sad. I might feel a little nauseous. I might feel a little sweaty. I might be a little nervous and have some anxiety that somebody's actually going to come over and ask me to dance, right? So, it's a, so my behavior could be that maybe... I get up and I leave the room, the dance room, and I go to the washroom where I go in the hallway and I have a chat with people out there so that I don't get myself caught into a situation out on the dance floor. Okay, see how it affected the behaviors. Now, if I went through it in a positive way and my thinking is, oh, well, whatever, it looks like it's fun and everybody's just having a good time. Nobody's going to stare at me and realize I'm not a great dancer. So my emotions are happy. They're joyful. They're they're uh, pleased, they're um, looking forward to, um, you know, I, I'm in a really good state of mind. So my behavior may be all of a sudden I jump up and I go join some friends on the dance floor and I start dancing with them and we have lots of laughter and fun. So do you see how that same event can just be interpreted differently whether you're negative or positive? And it really, really can be that simple. Benefits of a positive attitude increase lifespan. Who doesn't want to live longer in a healthier, happier way? So it's it helps to increase your lifespan. It lowers the rates of depression and it lowers our levels of distress. So to having that positive attitude, and I have to say it really does work, because like I said earlier, I, I've been working on my attitude, um, you know, for the past year, and I've really found a difference in the way that I respond. I don't feel the stress that I used to feel. I don't feel the anxiety that I used to feel. I don't feel as depressed as I was. Greater resistance to the common cold. Well, I think everybody other than COVID has been extremely healthy this past year because of masks and hand washing. Better psychological and physical well-being. Yes, my mind is in a better, in a better state it's in a happier state. It's in a good state. I feel more balanced. And I've actually started doing some exercising now. I'm exercising every day or every second day. It depends on my body's feeling that day. But I exercise is definitely part of a routine now, which I've started and I'm really actually enjoying. It makes me feel better and I'm rewarded for that behavior. I feel great all day. I, I'm in a happier mood. I have more energy. I love how it's making me feel. Reduce risk of death from cardiovascular disease. It's not affecting us in health like a negative attitude would. Better coping skills during hardships and times of stress. It makes us more resilient. Now, you people are pretty resilient the way you are. I mean, we've, we've gone through some, some challenges in life and everything else um, to have reached the ages that we're at. And we've, we've learned resilience, but we can never stop being resilient. We have to keep getting up and saying, what is life trying to teach me? And then going right back at it again, right? So trying to lower our levels of stress and, and all that kind of stuff, and then getting better and more comfortable with coping skills and everything else. For an example, you know, something happens. Is that in my control or is it not? If it's not in my control, then I'm gonna to choose to let it go. If it is my control, then I'm going to say, okay, well, how, how am I going to try to fix this? Is this too big? Maybe I need to chunk it down into smaller pieces to reach what I want to get, right? Just looking at all those different things. So positive aging. Roe and Kane's three-factor models. Focus is freedom from disease, remaining cognitively and physically adept, and social engagement. So to successfully age... We want to maintain physical and cognitive function. We want to stay active, our bodies, our minds. We want to continue engaging with life. We want to get out and we want to be involved socially, physically, when maybe join a bowling team. Maybe we go out, you know, the Thursday morning tea and, and that kind of stuff. And then minimize the risk of disease and disability. So really in taking care of our physical health, that's important. Uh, it's important to stay connected, stay healthy, and remain active and involved as it truly adds years to your life and is part of a positive, healthy lifestyle. Older doesn't mean weaker. It means wiser. So, also known as successful aging is active aging and aging gracefully. So, 
All right. So preventing loneliness. Look at a couple of things that may affect us a little bit and try to pull us down. Well, to prevent loneliness, we need to stay active and to look for new ways of social contacts. Now, I know this past year has been challenging to everybody. I know and everybody else knows. And you know what? You're not alone in feeling that. Everybody's feeling it. Even those that are young and capable and socialites and everything else, they're feeling it too. So it doesn't matter the age. It doesn't matter what you do for a living or where you're at in your life. Everybody has felt a sense of loneliness over the past year. But all we can do is, is to continue to stay active and to look for new ways of, of being socially connected with people. Um, maybe it can be taking a walk in your community and, and waving to people or having, you know, socially distanced little chats in the driveway as you're taking your walk and things like that. Um, you know, it could be going to church and, and again, sitting socially, you know, uh, distance and everything else from people and, and, and doing that kind of stuff. And now that we're all getting our, our vaccinations, again, we're going to start being able to return somewhat back to more normal activities. Um, very young children can brighten up your life. So perhaps you can volunteer at your local school library in reading, uh, having a reading time for young children uh, that you sit and read them books. Or perhaps you're actually volunteering right in the classroom during reading time and you have a group of children that are maybe struggling a little bit with their reading and you're helping them and you're reading with them. So spending time maybe with your grandchildren or your great grandchildren can bring laughter and really brighten up your day. And then learning to recognize and deal with the signs of depression. Do you know what depression looks like? You know, and if you know what it looks like, do you know how to support somebody if you suspect that they're dealing with some depression? We have a presentation on depression uh, that you probably can find through our website, cmhanb.ca. Uh, we have a lot of presentations that we've done over the past year, and a lot of many of them have been recorded and put on our YouTube channel. And depression is certainly one of those that has been there, uh, put up and, and has been recorded. So you could see the, the, um, the presentation in that manner. But being able to recognize signs of depression, you know, somebody is withdrawing, somebody's not taking care of themselves physically as well as they used to. They're not taking calls anymore. They seem so sad. They seem helpless and hopeless. Um, you know, all these different, they don't feel good and, and, and they just, they want to stay in bed and they're so down. They, have, they can't concentrate anymore. Um, they're like a foggy brain, that kind of thing. Those are signs of depression. Um, and, it, and it is good for us to know what it looks like so that we can watch those that we love um, in our lives and, and keep an eye on them and reach out if we suspect. You know, I've been watching you lately and you look a little bit down and, you know, I've, I've seen you kind of withdrawn. You haven't gone bowling in three weeks and you haven't done this or that. And is everything OK? You know, is there anything you want to talk about? So just to have that little bit of conversation with them enjoying our retirement. Um, make a list of your abilities and skills and share that with organizations. If you're not ready to be retired, maybe you'd consider volunteering. I know not-for-profit organizations are so thankful for volunteers in any format. So by making a list of your abilities and skills, when you sit down with a not-for-profit, you say, hey, I'd love to be able to become one of your volunteers and this is what I can do. This, this is what I've done in my lifetime. These are my abilities and my skills. Can any of this be of service to you? You know, so that can be really helpful. Enrich your life by renewing contacts with neglected family members and old friends, people that you lost touch with. You know, people that you might have grown up with years and years and years ago. Technology now allows you to reconnect with those people where we couldn't have done that years ago. Renew your interest in the hobbies and activities you enjoy. If you think back to times when you were working and it was busy and then it would get busier and then there were a lot of demands put on you, you would take, you, you were needing extra time to do everything that you needed to do so you would take time from things that you love doing, things that you were passionate about, to make that extra time. And then you would go through it and you would work through it, but you'd forget to give that time back to your hobbies and the things that you were passionate about. So we kind of forget those after a while. We forget about them. 
I used to love playing the guitar. I loved playing the guitar. I'm not a good guitar player, but I could get myself through a song. I haven't done that in years because I was busy with other things. And I needed that time as I took the time. And then I never went back and picked up the guitar again. It's probably not even tuned anymore. So now's the time to go back and, and, and look and say, you know, what were the things that I used to be so passionate about? What did I used to love doing? And you go back and you find some of those things and bring them back. Maybe it was cross stitch. Maybe it was throwing horseshoes. Who knows, right? And then, of course, if you can afford it, travel. Well, well, even that's a little difficult right now, but we will go back to travel. But in other words, you've worked hard all your life and you save for this day. And if you want to go see the grandkids, you know, because maybe they live in another province, then as soon as we can travel again, you book your tickets and you go see your grandkids. If that ability is there, enjoy it while you can. So aspects of your life impacted may include, and these are the, the eight different um, areas in our life that we have to make sure that we're getting a little something in. So learning. Today, you're here with me and you're learning. You're learning all about a positive attitude, what it looks like, how I can develop it, how, I, you know, all that kind of stuff. So you're learning today. And we need to be learning on a regular basis. I always have a self-help book on the go, a workbook, that kind of stuff. I love learning. Even at my age, I love learning. Spirituality. It doesn't mean, I'm not saying that you have to go to church an hour a week, unless that's what you like to do for your spirituality. That's wonderful. But for some people, it may be meditating. For other people, it may be taking a walk in the woods and reconnecting with nature. There's different ways that we can find spirituality that brings us that sense of peace and calmness. Social participation. We need to be able to connect with people around us and, 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 and to be out there and participating socially with, other, with others. Leisure. We have to make sure that there's leisure time. There's fun time. There's relaxing time. There's time for me to do stuff, whether it's I want to read a book or pick up the guitar and play guitar some more or start playing again, that kind of thing. Health. I need to be focused on my health and not just physical health. I need to focus on full body health. OK, so my my mental health is as important as my physical health. Now, I'll give you an example. If I was a long distance runner and I ran 25 clicks every day, 25 kilometers every day, because that's what I did for a living was run marathons. If I woke up one morning with depression, I wouldn't get out of bed no matter how physically fit. I wouldn't be able to get out of bed and go for my run. Depression would hold me back. So our mental health is as important as our physical health. So we need to make sure that when we're looking at our health, that we're talking whole body health. Our financial security. We need to be more in tune with, our, am I going to be okay when I retire? For an example, my husband and I have made a plan. Our goal is set that when I will retire a few years before him, I'm a little older, but once he retires in, in the fall, the following early summer, we're leaving for a, a camping uh, cross Canada trip. We want to go see our country before we see others. And we'd really love to camp our way across Canada and back. So we're going to take about three months and go and stay in different areas and different provinces right across to BC and then maybe come back and if we can, catch the, uh, the territories up above. But the whole idea is we need to make sure financially that we're set for that. So it may be 10 years ahead. However, I've already started planning for that financially. So we want to make sure that the things that we're looking forward to in our aging years, that financially will be okay. Will I have enough to live on? That kind of thing, right? Work. Some may want to work. My father was, a, was an example of that. He was forced to retire at 65. He then turned around and started two small businesses. And he kept those going till he turned 80. So he wasn't ready to retire at 65. Um, but he was, he was happy to keep going. So he started these two small uh, part-time businesses and had them going and loved it just loved it. And then finally at 80, he said, well, I think it's time to put down the pen. 
So um, I hope to be able to work part time a little bit after I retire because I don't want to sit home by myself for four years. Right. So those different things. So if work is important to you, then is there a way that you can still find it or does work become volunteer time now? Right. And then family life. Well, family is always, always important and connecting with your children, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren, whatever in whomever that group is. It could be sisters, brothers. I'm still care. My, my parents are still there. Their aging parents are both in their 80s. Love them dearly. They're still very active socially, physically, emotionally, mentally. Everything is good. Um, and they're enjoying their lives. So, you know, that that right now is really, really good. So benefits uh, to a positive attitude in your life is expecting success and not failure. It allows for greater openness to experience and inspire yourself. It gives you strength to not give up if you encounter obstacles on your way, becoming more resilient. You regard failure and problems as opportunities. Believing in yourself and in your abilities, we still have abilities, right? You show more self-worth and confidence, self-confidence. You look for solutions instead of dwelling on problems. And you are open to seeing and recognizing opportunities. And it's really important. I met um, a lovely lady from Port Elgin a few years ago. She was in her 80s. And she came up to my booth. I was doing a kiosk. And she said, do I look like I'm, and she gave me her full age. And I said, no, you have a very young looking complexion. And she said, that's because a lot, a lot of years ago, I decided to worry when there was a reason to worry. And I just looked at her and I smiled and I thought, wow, some words to live by, worry when there's a reason to worry. I just, that just meant so much to me. So tips for a positive attitude. Look for the bright side of life. It's there. If we want to just focus on negatives, oh yeah, we'll find them. But why not try focusing on the, on the positives in life, right? We're still alive. We're healthy for the most part. Um, we're still enjoying life. There's a lot of th good things that have come out of COVID. COVID has caused us or, or created a, an environment that we had to slow down. We were going so fast that just life was passing us by. We weren't even seeing it. We weren't living it. We were just existing. We were going from one thing to another, to another, to another. It, it just never slowed down. And so COVID got us to slow down. We're taking better care of ourselves, our health, uh, and mentally and physically. We're planting vegetable gardens. We're doing more exercise. Um, you know, we're being more mindful. Maybe we've looked at our priorities. I know that what I thought, some of the things that I thought were important a year and a half ago are not as important to me anymore. You know, I've really kind of realized what's truly important in my life over these last, this last year, whatever, 12, 13 months. So, there is a bright side. We just, and that's what we need to focus on. Our vaccinations are coming now. People are getting vaccinated and we're really going to start getting this hopefully under control. But because it's new to everybody, it's not a matter of finger pointing or anything else. It's a matter of taking the time and doing what we think is the best thing to do. Choose to be optimistic. It is a choice. Every morning when you get up and you're brushing your teeth or whatever you're doing, choose to have a good day. Today, I'm choosing to have a good day. And it's not to say that your day is going to go perfect. Something could happen that could throw you off your good day. Deal with it. Don't procrastinate or put it off. Deal with it and move back into having your good, uh, optimistic and positive day. Find reasons to smile more often. You know, for those of you that are a little tech savvy, if you do a Google search on the Internet, you can Google Carol Burnett and uh, the dentist scene. And that's when um, Harvey Corman and uh, uh, Tim Conway, uh, Tim Conway was a brand new dentist and Harvey Corman was his first patient. And it is one of the most hilarious things I have ever, ever, ever seen on TV. And of course, back then it was live. And Harvey had no idea what Tim was going to say next because Tim went completely off script. It is so funny. Those are the things that we need to do. Find reasons to smile more often and have faith in yourself. Don't be hard on yourself. Don't be rough on yourself. 
and don't be expecting and don't go with the shouldas, couldas, I must, I, you know, I have to. And no, just have faith in yourself. Everything will be done in its time. You've always done it before. So why would you fail yourself now, right? So have faith. Associate yourself with happy people. It's very challenging to a positive person to spend time with a negative person. It takes a lot of energy to try to keep up with them. So try to find happy people to have around you in your life. And if you can't find them, make, make yourself be one of them, right? Read inspiring stories and quotes. You know, Chicken Soup for the Soul, those books where have amazing short stories in them of people and their inspiring stories and, and motivating and the quotes and, and all that kind of stuff. You know, there's some really good stuff out there. Repeat affirmations that inspire and motivate you. I started doing a meditation where I have what are called mala beads and they're like a rosary. I, everybody, even though you're not Catholic, you know what a rosary looks like. And so every night I sit down and I put my meditation music on and I sit in the dark and I go through my beads one by one by one saying a positive affirmation. I am capable. I am kind. I am beautiful. And I will repeat it for as many beads as are on my mala. In my case, there's 60 beads on there. So I repeat that one affirmation 60 times. And every night I change my affirmation. So over time, I'm feeling more confident, more capable, more kind, more loving, more supportive. And th that's helping me. Those affirmations are helping me. I'm not hurting myself and I'm not taking like my negative voice used to do. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm really turning things around to be more positive in thought. Visualize what you want to happen. For an example, my trip across Canada, camping trip, we have visualized it. We have now put that goal on paper. We have made smaller goals to help us reach that big goal. And we are working towards those smaller goals. So it's not just visualizing, but being concrete about it. If you have something that you want to happen, you need to think it, you need to write it, you need to say it, and you need to believe it. And it'll happen. Learn to master your thoughts. And the only way we can do that is by listening to our thoughts. We need to listen to what that language is. Is it positive or is it negative? So we want to be sure that, you know, we're, we're taking good care of ourselves. So keys to coping with stress. So long-term lifestyle. When, when we look at it, we're not just living for today and tomorrow. We're, we're living for, you know, hopefully years ahead. It's, it's a long term. So growing older is an experience that we all share. And many of us worry about um, our health. Um, we can have all kinds of changes that our, our health can go through. Our financial situation can go through. They can cause source, be sources of stress. We're not as strong as you, we used to be. Illness is maybe more of a problem. Children move away from home. People we love pass on. We may become lonely and eventually we give up our jobs and we retire. But coping with all this change is difficult, but it can be done, right? The keys to coping include your long-term lifestyle, your ability to expect and plan for change, your strength, the strength of your relationships with surviving family and friends, and your willingness to stay interested in and involved with life. It's very important to think carefully about what will happen to you as you age and how you're going to deal with the changes that will happen. So it's really important to keep the focus on all those kinds of things. One of the ways that we can do that is by practicing mindfulness. Mindfulness, hopefully some of you have been doing it while I've been sitting here chatting, is simply being here in this moment. So in other words, you're sitting here and you're listening to what I say and you're thinking about how it applies to you in your life, but you're not doing your grocery list, thinking about the list of tasks you got to do this weekend, thinking about the chores that you got to do later on today and, and figuring out, you know, um, some financial or legal things that you, none of that stuff is here in your mind at this time. You're simply focused here and that's being mindful. So in other words, we can spend 30, 45 minutes cooking a really nice supper, 
and then we sit down to the table and in 10 minutes we're getting back up we're rinsing our dish and putting it in the dishwasher or we're washing the dishes we weren't mindful at all and when i say mindful i'm i i guess i'm saying perhaps if you sat down with your plate of food and then you just took a minute or two to look at it to look at the color on your plate um, to, to feel the warmth of the food coming up and, and touching your face, um, to smell the food and, and all the different spices or the different smells that each, each particular food on your plate is creating. And, and you're, you're enjoying the color and then you're looking at, okay, well, what color is missing? Well, there's nothing orange on my plate. So maybe next time I can add something orange to it, orange, like a, an orange uh, pepper, right? Yellow peppers. Um, so, it, it's just being more mindful. And then you take your first bite and you really stop and think, okay, what does this really taste like? What am I tasting in this bite? And then as you slowly take the time to eat, you're thinking about where the food came from, the farmer and all the work that he had to go through to grow that food, the transportation, the, the, the getting it from the farmer's table to your table, the time that you took to cook it, the love that you put into cooking it. It's being mindful of that moment. And people, that has been so effective in helping people lower their stress levels and, and different, different parts uh, and different things in their lives. It's really helped to kind of settle that, all that stuff down. It's not fretting over the past or worrying about the future, but rather simply living in the present moment with awareness of ourselves and our surroundings and a non-judgmental acceptance of it all. So where do we find support? Well, mental health services are all around you. So there's local mental health professionals. There are peer support consultants, mental health mobile crisis units. So if you feel in crisis with mobile or with mental illness, then you can reach out to the mobile crisis unit for help. Local mental health and addiction centers. There are some all around the province. Chimo is a helpline for anyone. And that's a toll-free number, so it won't cost you anything to call. Somebody will always be there to answer the phone. Your family and friends are there to support you, to love you, to care for you when you need help. 911 emergency, your local hospital. And one thing that we need to add on there is the now the number 211. So if you're looking for types of services, whether they're mental health related or physical health related, or could be social or financial or whatever, and you're, you don't know what's available in your community or surrounding area, if you call 211 and have a conversation with them, they will help you find those local services for you and, and, and give you the numbers, the contact information and everything. So not 911, 211. Staying active and social. Well, groups for older adults, right? There's all different kinds of groups. There's card games, there's activities, physical activities, all that kind of stuff. Activity centers is, an, is a place where you can um, stay, make sure that you stay involved. Local libraries. I, I'm still one of those people that loves to have a book on the go that I can actually, when I'm done reading, I can flip the page over, turn the corner, the dog ears, they call them. I love books. I love getting new books to open them up and smell them. I just, I love having an actual book. Local recreational centers, okay? There's all kinds of them around. They have different kinds of activities. Pickleball is one of the greatest things going right now. It's been for a few years. And I know a lot of older people, older adults that are involved in pickleball. Committees. There are different ways to volunteer through committees or um, just through volunteer work itself, helping out at fundraiser events, that kind of stuff. Big brothers, big sisters, spending time there. You could look at having different groups or starting a group of quilting, knitting, crocheting, crafts, whatever it is that you'd like to do. And it could be at a different house, you know, each week or every month or however often you're going to do it. Go for coffee and tea or ch and have a chat with somebody, you know? And then of course, Government New Brunswick has a lot of different senior programs and services. That's the number to, to find out about all the different kinds of uh, programs and services. 
And then there's Ageless Grace, which is an online wellness community uh, group that you can um, be part of and, and uh, find out about more information about that. So there's the references that we use to put this PowerPoint together. And there's my contact information. So like I said, my name is Denise Miller. Uh, my email address is denise.miller at gnb for government new brunswick gnb.ca my phone number is there which you can leave a message uh, and of course our website address www.cmhanb.ca so i'm now going to stop sharing and see if uh, there is anything under chat. Okay, Dawn, my co-worker is on here and she did put uh, a couple of links on there. So mental health information resources can be found. There's our website address. Uh, there's our Facebook address. So please like us on Facebook and you'll get notices of any upcoming presentations, programs, all that kind of stuff. And there's our uh, YouTube channel link. So those three links are under the chat. So just wondering if anybody has any questions uh, before we uh, sign off, if there's any any questions or comments or thank you for the good presentation. You're very welcome. Um, anybody have any questions or anything you want to share? No, it looks like everybody's good. Okay, well, I thank you very, very much for joining me uh, this morning for this presentation, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope we were all able to learn something together. Uh, so from all the folks at CMHA of New Brunswick, I wish you a very good day and a very good week. Take care. Bye for now.